I'm John Alder for DIYPhotography.net. We're here at the Adobe stand at NAB 2019, and we're going to talk about some of the updates that have just come to Adobe Creative Cloud in the latest update. So I'm here with Cole Sule from Adobe, and we're going to talk about the new updates that have come in Adobe After Effects and Premiere Pro CC. So let's start with the content aware fill for video that's coming after effects. Tell us a bit about that. Well, it's been a long time coming. We actually uh, sneaked this as a technology at our Max trade show a number of years ago uh, called Project Cloak, and people were immediately wowed by what it does. Um, basically, the idea behind this is if you've masked out or keyed out some portion of your video because there's an unwanted object, Content Aware Fill for Video will automatically go through, look at previous frames, future frames, try and find pixels that will plug that hole, and if it can't find them, it'll even synthesize pixels based on pattern recognition uh, within the imagery. So this is something that's powered by our Adobe Sensei technology, and uh, um, it's designed in such a way, part of the thing that I love about it is too often these features, it's like they either work or they don't, and if they don't work, you gotta start over. The way the uh, After Effects team has designed this is it can get you 80 to 90% of the way. You can also do things like click one button to generate a reference frame to go into Photoshop and do your own cleanup work for that. And it will use that information in the algorithm to track the rest of your shot. And it also, what it spits out is a... Uh, uh, a PNG sequence that's right. independent so that uh, if something isn't exactly lining up, if, if Content Aware Phil gets you 90% of the way there but you want to do that last little bit of uh, cleanup, everything is exposed, everything is ready for you to just jump right in and do it. So right. uh, yeah, fantastic tool. Right out of the box, it does some amazing work. Um, but yeah, with you know, in some cases, I, I work with a lot of visual effects people that uh, you know they zoom in and pixel peep and they make sure everything is 100% perfect. For those folks, there are the tools to uh, to go in and do the rest of the cleanup work if you need to. Right, brilliant, and that's in After Effects CC. Yeah, that's the the big new feature in After Effects CC. Are there week. any plans to bring that to Premiere in the future, maybe? Um, we will see. You know, that's always something that the After Effects and the Premiere Pro team are always trying to decide on the best possible workflows. And we don't want to load Premiere up with yeah. a million compositing features. But where it makes sense, we do migrate things from Premiere to After Effects or After Effects to Premiere as it makes sense. Uh, a big example of that is uh, the way masking and tracking is done in Premiere. We actually borrowed a, a feature set from After Effects. It's the exact same tracker that's in After Effects. And we use After Effects keyframes in Premiere. Any keyframe you generate in Premiere is effectively an After Effects keyframe if you send those layers over to After Effects. Um, this release, we actually took the masking and tracking that's been in Premiere for a while. Um, and uh, this was all a big cycle about, let's see how we can improve performance and improve workflow. Um, and as part of that, the Masker and Tracker, we found some ways of optimizing it in Premiere. So it's 2x faster if you're doing like HD work. More and more, particularly at this show, we're seeing you know 4K, 6K, 8K workflows. Um, so as you move to higher and higher resolutions, the performance actually goes up. Um, so uh, if you're working on 8K footage, um, the masking and tracking is actually 38 times faster wow. in this new release than what it was before. So that's wow, a that's huge pretty, performance yeah, that is pretty amazing. So on the, you were talking about the workflow uh, speed increase. Tell me about what you've done in Premiere Pro for that, because there's some new organizational stuff with the, the, the project bins for organizing your footage. Yeah, so um, this is actually near and dear to my heart because I work in the uh, Santa Monica office. We have a, a, a team of engineers that are part of the Premiere Pro group, but they focus on a lot of the Hollywood-based workflows. And we do specific engagements in Hollywood um, on certain feature films where we can learn from editors and we can make the software better. We'll pick and choose just a few very small projects a year. We did a project last year called Old Man and the Gun was the name of the film. This was distributed by Sony Pictures. It was edited by uh, Lisa Zeno Churgan ACE. And uh, we worked really closely with Lisa and her team. Um, she came from a background where she had the ability to have kind of the ability to move icons around and use that as an organizational tool. And this gave us an opportunity to work with her to say not only, you know, make it do what she expects it to do, but uh, to improve on that workflow and add additional functionality to that. So uh, what Freeform Bin View is, is it's a way of looking at icons where we can roll, you can roll the mouse over a clip, so you see a thumbnail, but you roll the mouse over the clip, you actually see the video moving within the thumbnails, and you can pick up make clips smaller or bigger, 
um, so you can prioritize the, the hero shots. You can put them in big stacks. We have an easy way of kind of looking through a stack of clips. Um, and you can even lay them out in sort of a storyboard-like view and use that and bring that to a sequence for, uh, for doing your edits. So uh, just from a creative standpoint, it's something that you can blow up full screen and see, well, these are shots we're probably not going to use. We'll put those over there. These are the hero shots. I'll put these kind of in a row at the bottom, make them bigger. You know, so it, it gives you a lot of flexibility. Yeah, it's a lot less hassle than organizing into multiple okay. folders as well. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And best of all, we set it up in such a way that if multiple editors are touching the project, you could have like an assistant view, a lead view, another oh, wow. view. So we can save snapshots of whatever views that you want to look at. You can name them different things. You can give them a keyboard shortcut so that you can easily switch between them. So it's a lot like the workspaces. Yeah, exactly. So uh, just within the bins, this idea of having multiple freeform views uh, is, is something new for this release. Brilliant. And there's also been some big performance increases for both Premiere and After Effects, yeah? Yeah, so in uh, Premiere Pro particularly, uh, you know, we were one of the first to leverage the G power of the GPU with the Mercury Playback Engine, and we have had multiple GPU support for rendering in the past. Um, this cycle, again, because we wanted to kind of take a break, for, we've been doing feature release uh, you know, feature-laden releases up to four times a year yeah. uh, since Creative Cloud came out. And so this was an opportunity for some of the team to kind of take a break from that and look at ways that we can use the existing technology and really boost performance. And one of the big things that we did was uh, leveraging multiple GPUs. Uh, we used to use it kind of on a case-by-case -case basis depending on what effects and things you were doing. Now we've found ways to just make sure that we are maxing out whatever GPUs you have in the system. So uh, this will work with even older hardware. So if you have like a Mac Pro with the dual D700s in it, uh, we used to use both the cards before. Now we will max out the performance on both the cards. And this can equate to up to a, like a 5x increase in render speeds. And that's on Mac and PC. Mac and PC. Uh, the other big part of that is optimization for external GPUs. So I'm a MacBook Pro user. A lot of people, their primary machine these days is a laptop computer. And uh, the, the one trade-off that you always have with that is it doesn't have the horsepower of a desktop class uh, GPU. So uh, we're doing some demonstrations in the booth here with Sonnet showing a, a Sonnet uh, enclosure for external GPU. You need to have Thunderbolt 3. That's one caveat with this. We did optimize it for Thunderbolt 3 to take advantage of that extra speed and throughput. Um, but not only will we take advantage of the better card for playback in the timeline so that a machine that maybe couldn't do 4K production before, now you could have a desktop class card that can handle the scaling and has the performance necessary for doing that. Um, but then from a rendering perspective, the card in the laptop and the card in the external chassis don't have to be matched in any way to get an increase in render performance. So we will max out the internal card and the external card during the render process. So again, just a really, really big performance increase, both for playback in the timeline, if you're on a laptop with kind of a wimpy GPU, you can get that benefit. But then from a rendering perspective, you now have a dual GPU setup and we'll take advantage of both cards. Brilliant, and those updates are all live now, aren't They're they? all live today, yeah. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant. Well, thank you very much, Carl. All right, thank you so much. I'm John Alder for DIYPhotography.net. We're currently at the Adobe booth. We're gonna keep walking around, see what else we can find. Check the link in the description below. We're giving away eight and a half thousand dollars worth of cinema goodies. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.